Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Brian Beebe. I'm a high school math teacher and today I'm sharing some quick tips to organize your Google Drive. Before we get started, I just wanted to go back to my channel, search for how to organize digital files for teachers. This is a video that I made previously and I share about the basics of organizing digital files. But today we are focused specifically on hacks for Google Drive. The first one will be adding a new folder. In the previous video, we discussed how every folder should be a category and you're likely going to have several categories. So if I want to add a new folder on my keyboard, I click Shift F and then I can add my new folder. And that took me no time and now I have several folders here. The next tip is to use colors. So this is something special for Google Drive that to my knowledge, no other file system really has. So if I right click on a folder and scroll down to change color, I get these options right here. I know the options are limited, but it's much better than the no options that we typically get. So there are a few different ways that you could use color to help your Google Drive. One way is to add color to the folders that are most important to you. So that way, when I open up my Google Drive, my eye is directly drawn to the geometry folder if that's what I say is my most important folder. Another way is to use color coding. So for each of my courses that I teach, I assign them a different color. So geometry is purple, pre-calculus is green. I don't teach algebra or algebra two in real life, but let's say that algebra was red and algebra two is blue. Having them color coded helps me quickly associate the subject with that folder. Another way to use color in your Google Drive is for anything that's in a sequence, you can have them arranged in rainbow order. So my units one through six, they are in order numerically, but they're also in order by color as well. So here's my actual geometry folder for the current school year. I have one for each year and these are my units. I like to go by the number dash and then the title of the unit but everything here is color coded so that I see it in a sequence. And if you notice that this looks different from this other Google Drive, this is the most up-to-date version. This is the older version. So hopefully th this is my business account. This will be updated soon as well. For our next tip, let's say you have a folder that is super important that you're always going to. Like for example, my geometry folder. I want to be able to get to this folder quickly and easily. So what I'll do is go up to the address bar, click so everything is highlighted, and then just drag this down onto my bookmarks. So now if I click here, it will load this folder every time. You can also right click and go to edit and you can change the name of it. So on my actual school account, I have it abbreviated to geo. So on my school account, I do have bookmarks for my lesson plan folder, my geometry folder, my general geometry folder, and my calculus folder. Now for the most part, I like to just keep the icon of whatever it is that I'm using visible, but since these all have the same icon, it's important to actually have the label there. I just abbreviate it. And if you're curious about how to make it so you're only seeing the label, if I go to edit again, I can just take out the name entirely, and then I will only see that Google Drive icon. But then again, it matches the icon for my Google Drive bookmark, so I don't actually want to do that. I probably shared this tip before, but if you ever type in doc.new, it will open up a brand new Google Doc for you. The same is true for forms, sheets, and slides. So this next tip is new as of just last year. You can use copy paste and cut paste commands within Google Drive. So let's say I wanted to make a copy of this Google Doc. So I'm going to hit Control C on my keyboard. You can see right here, it says that it was copied and then I can click Control V. And now I have the copy of my doc here. The other way to copy is to right click and you know, go to make a copy, but you don't have to do that every time. You can just copy paste. This is really helpful if I want to take a copy from one folder and add it to another folder. Now what's really cool is if I want to move them all together, I have a few different options. Like I could click and drag, which is fine. I could go over here to where it says my drive 
and have the arrow go down and see all these different folders that I have. This is my business account, so there's a lot going on here. And I could drag this over to the side if that's what I was looking to do. But this shortcut might be even easier. So I'm going to click on the file that I want to move. I'm going to click Command X. And now it says that the item has been cut. I'm going to go to where I want it and then click Command V. And of course, if you're on a PC, instead of command, it would be control. So control C with control V or control X with control V. Now, if I go back to my folder where I was, that file is gone because it has been moved to the file right here. Now, if you ever find yourself wanting access to a certain file, but you don't want to keep making copies of it and have it in all these different places, you can create a shortcut instead. So if I right click on a file, and go to add shortcut to drive, it will pop up asking where I want that shortcut to go. And so if I select a folder and click add shortcut, whenever I go into the folder, I'll see that file, but it'll have this little arrow on it. So when I click on this, it will open up that document, which in this case, it's completely blank, but it's going to open up that file and I only have to have it saved to one place. So I'm not using up a ton of storage, saving the same file over and over and over again in all these different places. And here is our final tip. And this one is personally my favorite. So whenever you add files and folders into Google Drive, they're always in alphabetical order, unless you include numbers, then they're in numerical order, which we could see in this folder here. And that's kind of annoying when I look at my subject folders and then lesson plans is right here in the middle of them. It's a little bit frustrating, but I can actually rename this and have it move to the top of my folders list. So I'm going to click on the folder and click N on my keyboard. That allows me to rename my folder. I'm going to go all the way to the front and I'm on a Mac. So when I hit function E on my keyboard, it pops up this menu of different characters and includes emojis. So if I add the four pointed star, which is like my favorite one and add that to my folder, it moves it right to the front. So I could do that with any of the symbols or emojis here. It doesn't quite matter but it will help me rank my folders a little bit differently. Just be aware though, if you're using a lot of different symbols, they have their own ranking system and it's not as predictable as letters or numbers. So I like to just keep this simple and have my one or two really important folders have the symbols so that they appear where they need to. So for example, here in my school drive, my lessons plan folder does have the four pointed star but I put the five pointed emoji in front of my school folder. So that way lesson plans appears first, then the school folder. Then I have my subject folders, which I left in alphabetical order and they're color coded according to what I would normally do for my classes. This is what's currently inside of my geometry folder. So I had my unit folders here, but as I complete each unit, I'll move it into this year's folder. And then this year's folder will move into the folder where I have each year when this year is complete. Now the most important folder in here is my master folder. So I do have the title written out in all caps and I used the four pointed star. So that one appears first. So this is off topic, but if you're curious, this is what my master folder looks like. I could go through and color code these. I've been debating it cause I kind of like them being a little bit different from what's in my main folder but in each folder I have everything that I use to teach a unit. I have my assessments, my extra activities, my interactive notebook pages, the videos that I created for the unit. And then what I leave loose in the folder are all of the practice activities that I routinely use each year. And that is everything for this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment to ask. And as always, thanks for watching.